Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be going over some warm and spicy fragrances that you might be interested in trying, adding to your collection this fall, or maybe pulling off of your shelves if you have them. When I think of warm and spicy, mainly I think about fragrances that have prominent spice notes in them. And what comes to mind mostly are notes in the family of like cardamom, cinnamon, cloves that add just warmth to either a dish or to smells, sometimes in candles, in oils, etc. And these fragrances may also have ambery or resinous touches to them. So we'll see as we go along what the combination are of the ones that I have to share with you and you know I have a lot of fragrances because I am a no limits fragrance soldier <laughs> bringing you lots and lots of options across price ranges and olfactive families so the common thing here is warm and spicy but you'll see some variety in this range here today let's get right to it so let's come right out of the gate with maybe the queen of this category. Let's let's go for it. And you, you've heard about this one in 10,486 videos and you're gonna hear about it in one more. Well, actually several more because I think I'll be talking about this one a lot during the winter because I still love it. This has not gotten played out. This is Angel's Share by Killian, comes in this bottle that looks like a low ball for alcohol. If you don't know yet what Angel's Share stands for, my understanding is that it is the fumes that come off of alcohol, bourbon in particular, or is it cognac that's in here? It's cognac that's in here. But the fumes that come off of that, that rise up into the air, and that's called the share that goes to the angels, therefore Angel's Share. This is a fragrance that I never don't like wearing. <laughs> Every time I put this on, I feel magnificent. It is the quintessential warm and spicy fragrance and also is boozy. So there's a beautiful cognac note in here. There's heavy doses of a really soft and smooth cinnamon, lots of vanilla, some woody touches. I, I can't get enough of this one. In fact, I have a backup of it. I thought I'd go through this a lot quicker and as my collection grew, I have not, but I have been using it quite often. You don't need a lot of this. A few sprays will take you through a lot of the day. In fact, if you spray too much, you, you're you gonna be too much of a cinnamon bomb. So just be careful with that. There's some sweetness in here from Praline. So this bottle is fairly expensive. I think it's pushing 200 for just this smaller size of bottle and that's the only size that it comes in. If you'd like something a little bit more affordable, I would suggest Angelic Elixir from Dua. I happen to have a Dua blend that is Angel Share and then Pure Malt from Moogler blend it together, but it gives me a very similar feeling to Angel Share. I have tested Angel Angelic Elixir, excuse me, from Dua. And these bottles are an ounce and, are they an ounce? Yes, 30 mils an ounce and run you in the $60 range, but wait for the 30% off sales from Dua and then pounce and get yourself some of their gourmands. The gourmands that I've gotten from Dua, I would say I've got somewhere in the neighborhood of an 85% success rate. It's some of the other ones that Dua does that I've had some, some trouble with, but that's not what this video is about. Queen of warm and spicy fragrances, Angel Share. I do think this leans feminine. I think anyone can pull this off though. And for me, there's no denying that this is beautiful. A few people have said they don't like it, but I think it's one of like the universally appealing, mass appealing, warm and spicy fragrances. So if you like angels, share types of fragrances, but maybe don't want to get that one or would like to add something similar to your collection, check out Atar Fragrances, Atar Collection, Calt at Night. So this is very similar to me to Angel Share. It's almost even deeper, more sticky resinous than Angel Share. And this one has a cherry note that people pick up prominently. I do get some of the cherry in here. But I have to say, it just adds sort of another level of sweetness. It's almost like if, to me, if Angel Share was just, like I said, deeper, darker, sweeter, you might get a fragrance like this. So I won't spend a whole lot of time except to say that this is a bomb of a fragrance. Delicious, very deep, very strong, very long lasting. So don't be shy if you're going to buy this fragrance. You need to mean to wear it. You also get like a super heavy dose of the cinnamon in here, whereas I think the cinnamon in Angel Share, I would say is prominent, but more alongside of that boozy note and the vanilla and the rest of the sweetness in Angel Share. So Caltech at night. One of my all time loves from Alexandria Fragrances, this is a dupe of Parfum de Marly's Oijan and it's Apple Crumb. I, this was love at first sniff for me. I have tested Ojan, had a nice sizable decant of that and can tell you that these are nearly identical to each other. 
This is cinnamon and some sweetness. There's tonka in here. It's called apple crumb, but I don't know that there's actually apple notes in there, but you definitely get the warm, spicy, almost like in the direction of Angel's Share, just with a little bit more masculinity and a honey note and absolute just yumminess. <laughs> this is fall in a bottle to me. I love that it's small, it's portable if you want to take it with you. This is the kind of fragrance that I would imagine wearing at a crisp fall, well, crisp in the air, like the air is crisp and cool, kind of a fall festival. You've got your, you know, almost knee-high boots on. I don't fit into knee-high boots. My calves are a little chunky for that, but if you fit into them, you go. <laughs> Wear your knee-high boots. Mine are more like ankle, ankle height. One. Very warm, very spicy, also kind of resinous, has a little bit of a sticky, thick quality to it that I think is fantastic for fall. Sticking with Alexandria fragrances, I no longer own this one. I passed it along to a friend. The performance on this was maybe not what I was hoping. I wanted it to be a little bit deeper, but it's still quite nice. And if you want something a little bit more subdued than the ones that I've talked about, but still in the warm and spicy range, try Ravaged. It is a dupe for Musk Ravageur from Frederick Mall, which is a fragrance that I enjoy. I like a lot of the Frederick Mall fragrances, but I'm not quite ready to pay Frederick Mall prices. Not quite yet. Maybe at some point. I don't know. I may break down and get a, a bottle someday. But in the meantime, Ravaged is a, a decent substitute. It's not like a dead-on dupe for Musk Ravageur. If anything, I would prefer Musk Ravageur because it has more depth, more dimension. It's a little bit spicier. Ravaged is a, a little bit more subtle, but what you get mostly in there is a clove and cinnamon and vanilla and tonka bean combination. But just like I said, a little bit more subdued. Uh, it's a decent dupe, not an excellent dupe for Musk Ravageur and worth checking out if if you are in the market for dupes and you want something that's a little bit more subdued, try Ravaged. I'll talk about a few more sort of subdued fragrances, semi-subdued, and then we'll go back into some heavy hitters. One Beauty, perhaps even approaching like sub-masterpiece status, maybe not quite there, but somewhere in the ballpark of it, is Five O'Clock Eau Jambra from Serge Luton's. I think this is magnificent, to be honest with you. This is a spicy tea fragrance. So first and foremost, it's tea, but it also has prominent cinnamon and ginger notes that accompany a woodiness in here. You get a little bit of background honey here to accompany that woodiness, but the prominent notes are tea, cinnamon, and ginger, and it's warm. It's spicy, it's delightful, it's comforting. I imagine myself wrapping my cold hands in the in the late fall here or a cool fall night around a cup of hot tea and the aromas that are coming up from a spicy tea is what this reminds me of. Really delightful, really special fragrance and you will smell different from the crowd. And a fragrance that's also on the softer side or maybe more moderate, but it's not like one of these beast mode fragrances like some of the other ones that I have mentioned and will mention. This is a beauty. This is from Essential Parfums and this is Divine Vani. First of all, one of the more lovely, affordable niche lines. If you're into just niche, which I'm not, I don't distinguish between niche and designer and celebrity. If I like it, I like it and it's on my shelf, period, end of story. But I know that some people prefer to shop mostly niche. So if you're that person, but you don't have the wallet to support some of the higher niche prices, check out Essential Parfums or if you just want to find something on the more affordable end. Really high quality perfume, nice bottles. They have extra nice touches like the... I forget what it's called, but basically the straw component, there's a name for it, the tube that goes down into the fragrance becomes invisible as you start pumping the fragrance. So it's a nice, simple, classic design. And the fragrance is lovely, mostly vanilla, but you also get a lovely pepper at the top that calms down a little bit after a while. And then what comes out is the cinnamon and you also get some resins in here along with a tonka bean note that adds some sweetness to it. So it's both like a peppery vanilla as well as a sweet and spicy one at the same time. And like I said, this is a little bit lighter. It's fairly decent lasting uh, and somewhat projecting, but not a room filler by any means. So, so totally appropriate to wear to the office or to any setting where you're gonna be with other people and don't wanna offend folks or take over the room with your scent, Divine Vanille. Sticking with softer fragrances and one that I haven't heard really anyone talk about at all. Actually, no one. I've heard no one talk about it. And it's from Maison Sibirite, and this is 720, 720. It has a little bit more of an aromatic touch with a lavender note in here, but there's this trifecta 
of nutmeg, of cinnamon, of cardamom that makes this remind me of like Thanksgiving dinner, of baking in the fall, baking pies that have like pumpkin pie spices kind of a thing. It's subtle. There's something really interesting about this fragrance and that it's water-based. So, and when you spray it on, it comes, let me just show you what I'm talking about. It comes on white like that. And it looks kind of weird and you're thinking, oh my gosh, what has happened? But it's designed just to be patted or rubbed in. Oh my God, just a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful fall kitchen spice kind of a fragrance. Again, very subtle and rounded out from being too much in the foodie direction with that lavender touch. Super unique fragrance in the way that it's composed and the softness of this. So 720. A fragrance that leans maybe unisex into the male direction and also is in the softer category. And then we'll head over to heavy hitter territory. This is Moab from Fleur in the old bottles. I prefer the old bottles to the new ones. The new bottles are fine too, you all. But when you fall in love with the shape and look and feel the aesthetic of a bottle, this is kind of that. I love the architectural nature of these and the heavy lettering, heavy big lettering and all of that. Anyhow, this is definitely a spicy fragrance. It stays closer to the skin. So if you're someone that prefers fragrances that are not loud and that's just like your zhuzh, this line in general, you want to check out. I have Hanami from this line, which I adore and Moab, which my husband wears more than I do. Occasionally I do wear it as well. And I've tried some others that are really nice as well. So this is spicy notes. I detect something in the neighborhood of nutmeg and cardamom in here. There's a hint of saltiness. There's some woodiness to this, uh, but it's soft. It's soft and easy to wear around the house, to run errands, to the office, anything of that nature. Even a doctor's office appropriate. If you don't just wanna wear clean, you know, fresh fragrances to your appointments, you want something a little bit more seasonally appropriate, this might be a good choice. Fragrance that I mentioned very briefly in my caramel and honey video. In fact, I'll link down below the other fall gourmand fragrance videos that I've done. I've done chocolate, coffee, and then caramel and honey. So this is the fourth in a series. Not that all of these are gourmand by any mean means, but it's one that made the rounds last year quite a bit. And a bunch of us here in YouTube land just had to have it. Yes, I had my moment too where I just had to have it. I fall victim to FOMO just like everyone else. And it's Honey Oud from Montal. We've talked about how I hate these little dangly things and these super lightweight bottles, but that's not what's important. So yes, this does have a dominant note of honey, but it's also like a heavy cinnamon bomb. There's some woodiness in here as well. There's vanilla. There's a lot of sweetness. What this smells like to me in the dry down, because this can be a really potent fragrance. It smells to me in the dry down like crushed cinnamon crunch toast not with the milk in it just like if you crushed it like when you get to the bottom of the cereal box i was never a big cereal eater but i had friends that were big cereal eaters when you get to the bottom of the box and there's just like the crushed crumbs left and you like open up the bag and suck it down because you want the sweetness like candy that's what this reminds me of drizzled with some honey on top and maybe some other spices that aren't announced if you will in the note structure of this but cinnamon toast crunch here you go so let's head back over into the territory of fragrances with deeper, warm, and spicy presence. I should just go ahead and trade out this next fragrance for an actual full bottle of the Eau de Parfum. This is from Nikolai Parfumer, and it's Maharaja. I ended up getting just like the room spray, which you can also wear as fragrance and in your hair and on your clothing. Y'all, it's the same thing. It's just a lower concentration. Don't let anyone fool. You don't want to wear Febreze, I don't think. <laughs> We're not talking about that. But any of these other fragrances that come in like a room spray concentration, you can wear it. Okay, so anyway, I want to get the full bottle. This is this is fall in a bottle. Oh, so good. This is like if Christmas has a smell, which I'll talk about in a minute because I have something Christmassy in this video, then this is like the fall version of the Christmas smell cinnamon cloves coriander there's a little bit of lavender in here to keep it from going too too far in the kitchen spicy direction vanilla and it's just this potent melange of kitchen spices with that other aromatic touch and i think this is just delightful really really beautiful fragrance that i don't know it just it encapsulates everything you want that fall scent to be okay so it's if you like really strong fall candles that have strong cinnamon in them you might like something like this to wear on yourself 
So then imagine a fall, typical fall smell, except maybe trade out some of the spices for a strong, luscious, juicy plum note, like almost like a rotten plum note, which can be really delicious. Like it's on the verge of becoming bad. So you just bite into like that super juicy, sugary, taste and you have plum japonaise which i have a dupe of and it's forbidden plum from alexandria fragrances this isn't one that i wear much because plum in general is a note that i have to be in the mood for but when i am what a lovely choice here it's got a really generous dose of cinnamon some woods there's saffron there's vanilla there's amber it's kind of all of those things in one and just a delightful little fragrance as it gets cooler here. Great for nighttime. Great for the nippier days in the fall. Forbidden Plum. Okay, so I have a hidden gem for you. Hear me out and listen to me. <laughs> this is called Christmas in New York by Demeter. And I have their Eau de Cologne or their Cologne Spray Concentration. And I'm going to get the actual like Parfum little spray because I want to see what it smells like even more concentrated. This stuff is pretty potent. Uh, it doesn't last like forever and ever, but I get a good decent longevity out of this. I mean, these are Demeter fragrances. These are not designed to be beast mode and take you into the next day. But when I tell you that this fragrance smells like Christmas anywhere and fall anywhere, absolutely delicious delicious fragrance this is such a beautiful blend of those spices that we think of with fall there's nutmeg there's cinnamon there's other other undisclosed spices it has apple in it and it has this one note that is like a, it's called like a glazed chestnut there's another name for it but it's glazed chestnut in my mind chestnuts that are roasted and then covered sugar coated right and that sugar has had an opportunity to glaze and uh, caramelize over is that the word caramelize <laughs> over the the chestnuts all together in one scent it is so beautiful you all and i'm looking for the eau de parfum i will find it maybe i'll need to look on the demeter site itself to check it out but oh this is this is it this is it this is it and you're gonna see it again in christmas videos so get used to this one and you all you can spray this like all over your house you can spray it on your linens you can spray it on your sheets you can spray it on your robe in your bathroom you can spray it on your towels so that when you come out of the shower, you're enveloped in all of that Christmassy, just yum, yummy, yum, yum smell. Christmas in New York. Two more from Demeter that I will mention briefly because they smell exactly how they sound by name. And there's really just no need to explain except that you all, if you are not into the Demeter library, which is what it's called, of fragrances, and you don't mind fragrances that don't have like the longest longevity, the most tremendous projection, and you just want some really good smelling stuff, check out the Gourmands from Demeter. They aren't all hit, so make sure that you check out reviews. There are some duds in the bunch. And by the way, I have just some fabulous ones other categories like thunderstorm and wet garden they're supposed to be like photorealistic scents and all that that means is that it smells like identical to the thing that it's trying to portray it's not an artistic interpretation it smells no. like the thing so cinnamon toast and i have the rollerball here again another one that i probably want to get a perfume spray of and it smells like cinnamon toast <laughs> drizzled with a heavy heavy dose of butter so imagine it fresh out of the oven maybe even like with raisins in it because there's a lot of sweetness in here and then you pat on that yummy butter and it melts together that's what this little oil smells like so so good and then let me also put you onto cinnamon bun shut the front door and this smells exactly like a cinnamon bun i have to stay away from the cinnamon counter because i adore 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 the smell of cinnamon buns like it's like it's like the pied piper you know that smell like i'm like doo -doo -doo -doo, where is it but those cinnamon buns are just like calorie bombs and sugar bombs and i have to stay away from them they're not good for me but gosh the smell is amazing so i have wax melts that are in a cinnamon bun scent from northern lights that are fantastic uh, and this is just from demeter and it smells exactly as it sounds a little bit lighter but really spot on let's move on so this fragrance doesn't get a lot of hype on youtube and that's okay i like it uh i don't know that it's for everyone 
but it's it's a fragrance that maybe isn't associated with like fall. It's definitely spicy and it's definitely warm and it has some floral touches. This is from Jo Malone, the Dark Amber and Ginger Lily Cologne Intense. Really nice. This has ginger. This has cardamom. It has a lovely sandalwood base. There's some saltiness to this as, as well. So while it's warm and spicy, it also has a few little salty touches and floral touches that make this a super unique and interesting fragrance. Dark Amber and Ginger Lily. I have four more lovelies to share with you. And these are like true warm and spicy fragrances. Not that the ones we just talked about weren't, but these are maybe in the more classic direction that people think of. Well, maybe not one. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> but I'll start off the end of this video with Istanbul by Galavant. These are made in different bottles now, if I'm not mistaken. There's like a nice wooden architectural looking top that flares out that's really cool. I really enjoy this fragrance. This is quintessential fall beauty. It has ambery touches. There's resinous touches. There's a thickness in this. It starts off a little bit, even almost like gingery and peppery. I don't know that there's ginger or pepper in here, but it starts off like in that direction as a fragrance, like a real sort of spicy hit at the top. And it settles down into ongoing spices of cardamom. There's vanilla. There's tonka bean to give it some sweetness. There's a nice sandalwood in the base as well. It's just, it's a really delightful fragrance. I wouldn't say it's the, the most unique. Yeah, I've got it sprayed here, but it is so beautiful for fall. Warm, spicy, like in a bottle with the touches of sweetness from the vanilla and the tonka bean. You can't go wrong with this. A fragrance that I have wonderful memory associations with and is in my top 10 for life. I don't want to be without this. I'm on my second bottle of it is Chinatown from Bond Number no. 9. So people talk about this being a white floral. Perhaps it comes across like that to folks depending on where they are and what the weather is like there and what shines through. Yes, there's tuberose in here. For me, this is a spicy cardamom fragrance with a little bit of woody notes in there, sandalwood, and I even get touches of incense that I mean, like really faintly in the background. I have wonderful memories of wearing this in like super cold days in New York with that, you know, cold St. Nick. No, it's Jack Frost, not St. Nick. St. Nick is Santa Claus, Veronica. <laughs> Jack Frost nipping at your hair, nose, hair, whatever the line is in the Christmas song, that. So there was Jack Frost in the air nipping at my skin and I got a lot of the cardamom out of here. So I'll always associate this with that cardamom, slightly incensey, woody kind of vibe that I got in that New York City air. Really fantastic. So even though I associate this with winter, I also think of this as a beautiful fall fragrance. And yes, let's call it a fall spicy floral or floral spicy fragrance because the tuberose is in here as well. You do get that, but it's a softer, more well-rounded tuberose. So yeah, one of the beauties, like loves of my life. These last two are complete warm and spicy bombs. No denying. Let's Round it out with Tom Ford's Noir Extreme. When I think about Tom Ford fragrances, this is one that definitely comes to mind. I got a killer deal on this at the cosmetics company store. It came with this and a travel spray. And I think one other thing for like under $90 or so. And it is so, so spicy, so warm. There's vanilla, there's cinnamon, there's nutmeg. There are resinous touches from the amber. There's woodiness. This is this is a spice warm bomb. I bought this for my husband. He doesn't care for it as much as he cares for some of his other fragrances. He likes it, but it's not one that he reaches for. So it has made its way onto my shelf. And I love to wear this when I'm feeling a little bit adventurous. And sometimes I wear this to bed too. So yeah, Noir Extreme, really fantastic. Quintessential Tom Ford fragrance. And we're going to finish up with one that my husband and I fought over and it's on his shelf currently, but I use it a lot and we have a backup of it <laughs> and it's Sandal Ruby from Carolina Herrera. Yeah, I have a little bit of an obsession with this confidential line. This is one of the most fantastic fragrances and one of my best blind buys. This fragrance is a cinnamon bomb, but it's not just cinnamon in the sense that you get straight out of like cinnamon spice, right? It's got woodiness surrounding it, a beautiful sandalwood in here. Here. there's patchouli there's some tuberose it is a just a bomb of a fragrance so rich so deep really overpowering if you're not careful spray very lightly my husband sprays one pump to the chest and he's done and this entire 
floor, <laughs> not just this bedroom, but this entire floor smells like this all the way out into the foyer. Which direction is that? Into the foyer. And I will do two or three sprays because I'm kind of crazy, but you really only need one. Bottle is luxurious. Fragrance is very decadent, like a very decadent, rich, potent cinnamon woody fragrance there are some resins in here but i don't see any listed definitely a beautiful sandalwood i mean it's just it's hard to describe this fragrance but it is beautiful warm and spicy for not just the fall but also into the deepest winter that's my warm and spicy fragrances for fall i'd love to hear your top choices down below please share so that others can learn from you and get some other ideas for what they might want to pull off their shelves or add to their collection i'll see you in the next video my friends take care